Okay. The time being seven o'clock, I will call the city council meeting to order. If you'd please stand and let's say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. Let the full roll reflect that the council members are present and a quorum has been established. Uh, council members, are there any corrections to the minutes from the November 18th meeting? If none, they are approved. Um, is there anyone here who would like to speak to the council on anything that's on the consent agenda or anything other than what's on the consent agenda? This is your time to speak. No one? Okay. Council members, are there any council items to be considered? Seeing none, council, I would accept a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed. Council member Brox first and council member Leifeld. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails. Next, we have an overview from Melanie, our financial director, on this year's 2020 budget. Welcome, Melanie. Thank you. Council, tonight I'm here to present the Truth in Taxation hearing for the 2020 city budget. The Truth in Taxation meeting is to present the budget to the public and to receive public comment on that budget. Our purpose tonight is not to address the market values. The market value determination was part of a county process that was done earlier this spring. December 16th, the council will be asked to adopt the final budgets, levies, and capital plans. Our budget process began back in May with direction during work sessions. Staff then went and worked on preparing a budget to address council goals and operational needs. Our finance committee got together with the departments at an informal workshop in July to discuss the budget. We then had two full council work sessions to discuss the budget in August and September. A preliminary budget was passed in September. The county has recently in November sent the notices of estimated tax impacts and we're going to request that council adopt the budget and levy at our next meeting in December. So the principles of the budget is we focus on meeting basic city services funded at adequate levels. We try to estimate our anticipated revenues at realistic levels. We want to retain adequate reserves to protect against fiscal uncertainty. We want to incorporate council priorities, including sensitivity to tax rate and levy. We also want to demonstrate strong stewardship of existing infrastructure and plan for repair and replacement in a proactive manner. And we also want to foster our core values of the city when creating the budget. Communication, optimal service, respect for resources, and enthusiasm. So the budget climate this year while we were working on the budget. The economy has recovered, but it appears to be slowing down. Um, the state budget, the latest forecast was in February. They do a February and a November, but November was not available when this report was done. Um, they reduced their forecast surplus at the state level and they are anticipating slower economic growth through 2023. Um, what we saw here in Hastings is we saw our residential property values rising. Uh, residential was a little over 9%. That did result in a loss of some homestead market value for homeowners. And our commercial properties increased slightly at about 1.6% and we had a little over half percent new construction. So the first area we're gonna focus on is the total budget. That's all of our funds citywide. Our total expenditures budgeted for 2020 are 33.6 million. And as you look at this, you can see the biggest expenditures are in the general fund, followed by the enterprise funds. The enterprise funds are our funds that are there to, they're supposed to be self-supporting, like our water, our sewer, our hydro fund. 
We then have our capital project funds, which are typically those very large street projects or large infrastructure projects of some type. Our fire and EMT is in its own fund, and we're budgeting that at about $4.4 million for 2020. Um, all of our other funds that are at 12%, that does include parks, ice arena, and pool. And then our lowest expenditures citywide would be our debt service at 10%. And those are the funds that we house money in to make our bond payments each year. So what were our expenditures citywide for, or what, what is in the budget? Um, our capital outlay, we have about 7.6 million budgeted for 2020, which is up 440,000 from 2018. Um, a big portion of that is our street maintenance. We have 4.5 million budgeted for our street reconstruction project, which is 15th Street between Tyler and Pine, Cannon Street, and West 22nd through 25th Streets. Our wastewater department is getting new sewer televising equipment as theirs is obsolete now, and we're in our fourth year of our water meter replacement program. The ice arena has a new Zamboni in the budget, the pool is getting slide step replacements, and they're finishing the refurbishment of their large play structure that has the one for the kids with several slides on it. We're doing a trail reconstruct project along General Sieben, and we're seal coating a third of the trails. We're getting player dugouts at Vets Park, and we're upgrading fire and EMT equipment. We're doing an ambulance remount, we're getting new technical rescue rope, and we're continuing with our hose replacement program. Total revenues for the city are budgeted at $33.1 million, which is a little bit less than our total expenditures. And the reasoning for that is we have some healthy fund balances in our debt service funds. So we don't have to fully levy what we need for payments. We can use some of that fund balance. So you're gonna, there's a little less revenue budgeted than expenditures. You can see from this pie chart that property taxes make up the bulk of our revenues. Charges for services, that $11.2 million is the bucket that has everything from our water fees to our police tickets to a liquor license. All that kind of stuff is in our charges for services. Um, bond proceeds, we're anticipating about $3 million for 2020. Um, we have interest and other $1.8 million. Intergovernmental revenues is second to last at one4 That's things like our state uh, police and fire para-aid and if we are anticipating any grants. And then you can see that LGA is our smallest revenue source at 2% for the city. So now we'll take a look at our general fund. Our general fund is the largest fund in the city. And you can see the revenue makeup is a little bit different in that it's supported by property taxes, 70% of it. Um, we have a little bit of intergovernmental revenue. That includes that LGA. Um, fines and fees in this fund are primarily from uh, the city clerk's department, like your liquor licensing, um, dog licensing, or speeding tickets. That shows it's only 7%. Um, charges for services, 6%, and interest in other at 1%. So our expenditures, we have 50% to public safety. And I notated police because this does not include fire and EMT. What we have in that public safety would be building safety and police. That's half of our budget in the general fund. The next category would be general government. That would be your council expense, administrator, city clerk, HR, IT, finance, all of those administrative services are your general government. Public works at 18% would be your streets and engineering. And we have a very small piece, um, culture and recreation, 1%, but the bulk of our parks is in, a, in special funds. They're not within our general fund, which is why that looks so small. So general fund budget items of note. For expenditures in the general fund this year, we have LED lighting upgrades for City Hall and the Public Works facility. We have a special computer software to help us with security. The police are getting two police cars. We have the upgrade to the training room for the police, upgrade for body cameras, and a new officer position. Public Works and Building Department both have a new vehicle, and both of those vehicles are over 10 years old that we're replacing. We increased our mill and overlay by 100,000. We're funding the loop bus. 
we have an organizational study, and community development is working with Hedra to continue our branding message, work on Vermilion Corridor site prep, and hire a housing consultant. Valuation increases and tax impacts. This here is a chart from Dakota County showing our property classes within the city, what we had in 2019 versus 2020 and the percentage increases. So that first line you can see is our largest. It's residential, it's a little over 9%, followed by commercial industrial at 1.6. Our utility property class went up about three and a half and our agriculture decreased three and a half. Our apartments went up 2.6. Railroad property decreased 13.6, and our personal property increased just a little over half a percent, which leaves us with a total of a 7.67% valuation increase citywide. So what does that valuation increase mean? This shows our median home increase in town. So this is for a residential property. And what that 7.45% equated to was 233,700. So what that is, is that's our middle. Half the houses in town are worth less than 2337 and half the houses are worth more. So when we say median, we're talking about the middle. You can see it's continually climbed as real estate values have. So now we're gonna talk about tax impacts to a median value home and what that means. This calculation shows just the city portion of property taxes for a residential home. You can see that's there's that 2337 less the homestead market value exclusion. They get to subtract that off of their property value for a taxable market value of 217,000. We multiply that by the state class rate of 1% to get our tax capacity, and then we multiply that by the property tax rate. Right now, our preliminary levy, we're at about a 57.34% tax rate. So this home would pay $1,247 a year in just the city portion of their property taxes. We have to remember that property taxes are comprised of school, county, city, and sometimes special districts. So this is just one piece of the tax bill. So what this chart is trying to show is that market value home was worth about 217,000 in 2019, but our levy created a tax rate of 59.612%. You can see it at the bottom in the graph. That home paid $1,191, our middle home in 20, for this year, 2019. For next year, we're projecting with the value increase of the home, they will pay $1,247. On average, it's $56 more for our middle home in town in taxes next year with our proposed levy. So how does that compare? I went ahead and I took a look at the cities in Dakota County and I took their me median value home and I put in their proposed 2020 tax rate. Because when you look at the rate, you can see Mendota Heights, while they have a 40% tax rate, because of the middle value of their home, their average tax bill is $1,687. The reason we do that is because it's home values vary. It costs more money to buy a home in certain areas than others. So to get an accurate reflection of that tax rate, you can see here West St. Paul has a 72% tax rate and they are the second highest in the county. Invergrove Heights has a 51% rate, which is lower than ours, but their middle is higher. So it's cost more to live in Invergrove Heights. Um, Hastings was, middle was South St. Paul. Hastings is about 50 bucks higher a year than South St. Paul, but we're right there um, in the averages. And then you have your very high growth Southern suburbs down below that they're just, I think their market value is increasing so quickly with the amount of homes being built that they're still down there really low. So our property tax levy 
you'll see one number, but it, it's several pieces. And this just kind of shows the different pieces um, and the percent increase. The general fund went up uh, just under 5%. Parks went up quite a bit, about 20%. But there, there's a lot of capital items in parks this in tw proposed for 2020, as well as the pool. The capital costs are higher. Um, heritage preservation went up about $759. Fire and ambulance actually went down, but we're doing less capital in that fund next year. We increased the parks capital fund to do some of that trail work. The vehicle and equipment fund we increased. That's so that we can sustain these equipment replacements. The insurance fund, we're not putting levy towards because that was just to get that started last year and it's, it's running now. And the arena is up a little bit with the Zamboni. Our debt levy actually went down. You can see the percentage is much higher than what the general levy went up, but it's a smaller piece of the pie. So holistically looking at this, the total city levy is gonna go up just under 3.9. It's that 3.89, it's right there on the cusp of 3.9. So taking a look at the preliminary levies around the cities in Dakota County, you can see that we are one of the lowest with the exception of Farmington that must have had an event happen there to cause them to have not have to increase their levy, but we're right there with Apple Valley. They've got 3.98, we're at 3.9. So our tax, we did not increase tax as much at all or levy, I should say. So the statements of estimated property taxes payable in 2020 have been delivered. To talk about that process a little bit so everybody understands it, um, on January 1st, 2019, the property was valued by the Dakota County Assessor. That process started back in 2018. The beginning of 2019 is when they set those values and then property owners were notified of that in March of this year. The property owners were able to go to the Board of Equalization in June to dispute those property values. And in November, they prepared the specific truth and taxation notices from all the levies they were receiving from the schools, cities, and counties. Um, we have received no calls or emails that I am aware of in response to the truth and taxation notice from November. And these are just little informational pieces because um, it's a good thing to know. But the state of Minnesota does have some property tax refund programs. Um, there is a homestead property and there is a special property tax refund. Um, the homestead credit refund you can also qualify for if you're a renter. Um, there are some stipulations which I have on the slide here. Um, for the owner, you need to make less than 113. For a renter, less than the 61,000. Um, you have to own and live in your home on January 2nd of the preceding year. You have to have your property classified as a homestead or your primary residence. You cannot be a dependent of another, and you can be a full or part-time residence. Those are um, the M M1PR form is what those are called in. They're, they're great if you have a tax prepared to just ask them to run it for you to see if you qualify. The special property tax refund, you need to live in your home for a full calendar year. And if your net property tax increased by more than 12% and was more than $100, you're eligible for a refund. Another program I ran across that I actually wasn't even aware of was we, the state of Minnesota offers a property tax deferment program for senior citizens. Um, if you are 65 years old, your household income is less than 60,000, you've been in your home for an extended period of time, and you have less than 75% mortgage balance on your property, the state can offer you low interest loans that would be repaid to them upon the sale of your home, which may allow some elderly individuals to stay in their homes longer if that's what they desire to do. So in conclusion, the 2020 proposed budget continues addressing the goals of the city council. The city portion of the residential property taxes on a median value home will rise about 4.7% or $56 per year. So half of our residents will see less than a $56 increase or a decrease and half will see more than that. And we have all of our PowerPoints from our work sessions available on our website under finance tab. 
that's all I have for you tonight. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Um, at this point, we will open the truth and taxation hearing for public comments. Any comments from the audience? You can come up and state your name and address, please. question is directed towards I apologize Melanie yes. okay and you were talking about the tax increases you said like 1,000 whatever now is that a year or is that six months because we pay our taxes every six months that's per year okay well then why are mine 2,000 why are mine like doubled <laughs> I would have to look at your tax statement. that's why I wanted to direct her because it kind of I have questions for you to understand I guess a little better okay so do you have a business card Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? Okay. I will close the public hearing for the taxation and council. Any discussion? Any comments for Melanie? Council Member Balsonic? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'll address the questions to Melanie. Um, the parks budget, uh, did, did that, the, the expenditure, did that include the donation that was made to repair uh, the damage from the, um, that was out there in the, uh, that, that uh, athletic field? It did not. So that was, that's okay, not germane to the budget then. Very good. And then with regard to the uh, state property tax refund, uh, you had said, I think, for a couple, 113000 and for a single, or a, is it a rent, single? Renter. Renter, yeah, 61000 uh, Is Is that adjusted gross income, or is that taxable income? Or, you know, when you fill out the old 1040, it seems like you're, dealing with three bottom lines just for the sake of the public so they know it's it would be um, adjusted when you fill out the m1 pr form you would take your agi off adjusted gross income off of your federal form and then there's going to ask you some questions about your retirement income and you may have to add in or subtract things from there for the state's benefit but it is adjusted okay and again that procedure is done after April 15th of each year because uh, the, uh, well, because you tell me, <laughs> I so think I know, but. The, the property tax statements don't come from the county until the end of March typically. So if you file early, you'll wanna go back and check it. If you file in April, you may have your, your official property tax statement and then you can check it at that time. Right, okay, thank you very much. I uh, focus, just a comment, uh, focusing on the parks and recreation budget, uh, 430 acres we have uh, to take care of uh, here in the city. And uh, uh, there are so many things that are integral to what makes those parks and trails work. 30 miles of, tra th over 30 miles of trails, I believe. Um, and things like that. Uh, it's, it's very commendable as far as uh, that budget goes for what our parks department is capable of doing. Um, because I think per capita, we are a city that has an awful lot of uh, parks and recreation access when compared to other cities. So I think that's a real feather in our cap there. And of course, the other thing is that our tax rate has been going down. It's been, I think that's, I think that's because uh, it's been going down ever since I got on the council. So I, I, I could sit here and toot my horn and say, well, it's all because of me, but I know there's an awful lot more to it than that. But uh, it's always nice to see that rewarding 
uh, comment that uh, the tax rate is going down uh, uh, quite nicely. It would go down more if we could get more um, building, you know, more properties uh, being developed here in the city. That's one of the reasons why we have the Vermilion Corridor uh, study uh, to help promote uh, more of that. Um, that's why we have our new uh, city staff member, uh, Rusty, who is uh, out beating the bushes for developers to uh, uh, start some construction on new homes and so forth. Uh, the housing market is going great guns right now. There's a real shortage of uh, housing. More people are looking than what is available. And uh, I still find it frustrating that, that Hastings is kind of bringing up the rear uh, regarding our uh, uh, new construction, housing new construction. We uh, got hit in the gut in 2008 with the Great Recession. Uh, other cities have recovered, but for some reason Hastings is not. And um, uh, we're hoping that that is something that uh, with additional staff members and uh, a little bit better expertise uh, coming at us from Hedra that we can uh, get some things moving there. But uh, thank you very much for the explanation. Very, very clear, very cordial. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Council Member Brox. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Melanie, I just have a question about the timeline. I saw a comment, I don't know which story it was on Facebook about the city timeline is very long that we use to develop the budget, the whole process that we go through. So I was just wondering if you had any idea, and I, I know you've worked in other cities, so you might have some experience. Is our length of our process and the kind of process we use similar to other cities or dissimilar um, in length and amount of time? Because I feel like we spend a lot of time and effort going through that process, and the comment was basically, I think it could be a lot shorter. Do you think it could be shorter, or do you think it's an adequate amount of time? I believe it's an adequate amount of time. It is a, it's a long process. Um, I don't know how you would shorten the process just because we want to make sure that everything is well vetted, everything, everybody's comfortable, the public is aware of what's happening. I think it's pretty standard, our timeline with compared with other cities. Thank you, and I know we've been working, some of the things that aren't visible in this, but that we are working on in the back end include things like capital improvement plans with each department having a capital improvement plan, a list of all their priorities for the next 5, 10, 15, 25 years. And they have needs that go way beyond what we can fund in a given year. And so that whole process is meant to winnow it down to the specific things that we need each year. And so that isn't necessarily visible, but that's a lot of what the Finance Committee does. Um, and this year was chaired with by Council Member Foltz and also Council Member Vaughn and I were on that committee. And so that I believe and that that process is necessary, having been through it a number of times. Um, but I'm always open to suggestions. If you have any way to shorten the process or to make it more efficient, I, I think we're open to those suggestions. Council, any other discussion? Okay. No? Okay. Melanie, thank you. Thank you. For your report. See you on the 16th. Council members, do you have any announcements? Council member Fulch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's not necessarily an announcement, but I wanted to make a comment. I wanted to thank you, Mayor Fassbender. Thank you for making all the arrangements for the first tree lighting ceremony that we had on Saturday night at the end of the holiday hoopla. It was really lovely, I have to say. There was uh, cookies and hot cocoa for the public, and we had a middle school choir singing holiday uh, traditional songs on the steps of City Hall, and it was just a really nice turnout. I, don't, I didn't personally do a head count, but um, Dan, you thought maybe there was about a, 100 or 150 people present and so I just thought it was lovely and um, although you know the day had just some awful weather 
you know, before it, I was amazed at how many people um, showed up and we had a little, a little pause, you know, in the rain and the, in the downfall. So, um, so thanks so much. It was You're really um, considerate and is a beautiful tradition that you started. So thanks. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks to all the donors. Um, there is a banner that's hung. If you drive by, look to see the donors that donated for the installation of the tree and the tree and, and then the treats were donated by Emily's and the Onion Grill, so um, it's a it's a collaboration of people that have have brought that together. So, thank you. Um, any other uh, council members' announcements? Okay, I have a couple. I'd also like to thank um, Public Works, Parks and Rec, Police, and Fire Department for their assistance with the 22nd Gobblegate, which again. Uh, kind of darted some of the major weather, but we got through it, and I'm here to announce that we will be able to donate $120,000 to Hastings Family Service. So that's it's just a it's great. So uh, Santa and S'mores activity will be on Thursday, December 12th at Spring Lake Park. We have some meetings coming up. Hedra will meet on Thursday, December 5th at 6 p.m. Planning Commission will meet Monday, December 9th at 7. Utilities Committee of the Council will meet Monday, December 9th at 7. Parks and Rec Commission will meet Tuesday, December 10th at 7 p.m. And our next council meeting is Monday, December 16th. There will be a meeting uh, closed for attorney client privilege at 6 p.m and the regular me regular meeting will be followed after that at 7. Council, oh, Council, yes? I have one quick announcement, sure. in case you were not going to remind everyone. We wish you a very happy birthday oh. next Saturday. Oh. Happy birthday. Thank you. I wasn't going to announce that, but <laughs> yes, another year older on Saturday, so. Um, anyone else? Oh, holiday train. Thanks, Joe. Do you have the info? Other, otherwise, it's Monday evening at uh, down at the depot, and the train will actually. Well, I think uh, I think it arrives. We don't have an alarm set for eight thirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, the notes I have. I think the the music starts at eight fifteen to eight forty five. That's the last I got. So yes, that's a, another beautiful event for our community and for Hastings Family Service. Um, no other announcements? I'll accept a motion to adjourn Councilmember Leifelt and Councilmember Balsonic. We adjourn. Oh, sorry, all those in favor? I was in a hurry. All those opposed? Ooh. I don't know. Go Vikings! <laughs>